In this video, we're going to show you everything you need to know about using a DI box with your DJ controller. We're going to show you how it works. We're going to show you how to connect your DJ controller directly to a speaker using a DI box. We're going to show you how to connect your DJ controller to an audio mixer using a DI box. Then we're going to walk through what I think are the four best DI boxes for DJs and explain the pros and cons of each along the way to give you the most information possible. First of all, if you are looking for pricing or specs for anything that you see in this video, we do have links down in the description below where you can find everything that you see here from a variety of online retailers to make sure that you are getting the best price possible. First, we need to talk about a little bit of theory about how a DI box works. First of all, let's talk about the difference between an unbalanced and a balanced audio cable. The RCA outputs on the back of your DJ controller are known to be unbalanced audio cables. What does that mean? It means that an RCA cable basically has a ground and a signal wire, and that transfers your signal all the way to its destination from your DJ controller to your mixer or your DJ controller to a speaker. There's one signal wire and one ground wire. With a balanced connector, like a balanced quarter inch cable or XLR cable, there's a transformer inside your DJ controller, and it copies your audio signal and it will phase invert it. And then your, as your audio signal is going down the cable, if you pick up any static or interference, the way that that phase is inverted, it cancels out that noise and static and interference all the way down the cable. So that's why you can theoretically run up to a thousand feet without audio degradation on an XLR or balanced quarter inch cable. So that's how balanced cable works. Next, let's talk about the difference between a line level and a mic level signal. This is also really important as to how a DI box actually works. So first of all, a line level signal will come out at zero dB or plus four dB. So it's basically right at the limit as to how loud you can make a signal. The RCA outputs on the back of your DJ controller come out at minus 10. So they are a little bit quieter, but they're still considered to be line level outputs. That being said, the XLR inputs on your audio mixer are expecting a microphone level signal. A microphone captures acoustic energy, sound waves moving through the air and generates a super tiny microphone level signal. That's why you need things like a preamp or gain before you can add level to it, because this is a tiny signal coming from the microphone. So if you plug your line level signal into a mic level input, that's when you get clipping and distortion. It sounds grainy. It sounds flat. It sounds just horrible. So you don't want to do that. And we're going to talk about some ways to mitigate that as we go through the rest of this video. Okay, so let's use those two concepts now. Put them together to explain how a DI box actually works. What is it actually doing? So let's talk about a passive DI box first. So it takes that line level signal. You can plug that into your DI box. We'll show you this practically in a minute. But it takes that line level signal and then it will split it and it uses a transformer to phase invert one of those sides so you get a balanced audio signal and it will spit out an XLR connector out of the backside. So how is that actually possible if you're not powering this box? Well, it takes the voltage difference between a line level signal and a mic level output to run the transformer. So that's why every DI box, unless it's active, which we'll talk about in a minute, spits out a mic level signal. But this actually solves a problem for us because we want a mic level input if we're connecting this to our audio mixer. We're gonna talk about what you need to do when we go to the practical part about connecting it directly to a speaker if you don't want an audio mixer. So how does an active DI box work? Well, an active DI box takes external power, usually phantom power from an audio mixer, and it will boost it back up and give it more. There's a little preamp inside, so it will give a louder, more voltage signal for your XLR outputs out of an active DI box. Okay, so how does this actually work? What does it actually look like? Let's walk through a practical example of connecting our DJ controller directly to a powered speaker. One downside, most DJ controllers have RCA outputs, so that's what we're gonna use in this demonstration because it's worst case scenario. And since they're unbalanced, a lot of DJs struggle with how do I connect to a speaker that's far away? This is exactly how you would do it. So you can connect a cable like this that goes RCA to quarter inch. Most DI boxes have quarter inch. We'll cover that when we walk through the DI boxes if you want RCA inputs on it. 
But so we're gonna go RCA to quarter inch with this cable. We connect the RCA side to the back of our DJ controller. Next, we're gonna use probably the most common DI box. This has quarter inch inputs and XLR outputs. So we're gonna connect this. So go to the input, red is right, black is left. Connect that. So we have a signal to our DI box. Next, we have an XLR cable here. Now we're only gonna connect to one speaker in this example. So I'm gonna connect this. I'm going to call it the left output. Obviously, if you had another speaker, you connect the right to the other side. And we connect that to the back of our powered speaker. Okay, let's turn it up now. So I went up to 50% on the DJ controller, and I can notice now that I'm not getting a lot of output. My gain is set on the back of the speaker exactly where it's supposed to be, but the speaker is quiet. It's not nowhere near as loud as it is supposed to be. So we talked about before how the DI box is taking a line level signal and is dumbing it down to a mic level output. This is what catches a lot of DJs off when they connect directly to a DI box to a speaker. You need to go to your speaker, there's usually a switch somewhere on it, and you need to let your speaker know that you're giving it a mic level input. So now that we turn that on, we turn this up again. And now we have a line level volume coming out of our speaker. So if you are connecting directly from your DJ controller to your powered speaker, make sure that you do turn on the mic level switch on the back of your speaker. Okay, so next let's show you how to connect your DJ controller to an audio mixer using a DI box. This is really common if you're working with a production company or something like that. Your DJ booth or DJ table is at one side near the dance floor and the tech table is at the other end of the room. You need to balance your RCA outputs, get a signal all the way to the tech team, and then they run all the speakers and the PA. This is really common for bigger events, say more than 200 people or something like that. So we have the same cable that we had in the previous step. So we have a RCA to quarter inch cable going into our DI box. Next, we're gonna connect our XLR cable from our DI box to our audio mixer. Now, once the signal is balanced, theoretically you could run this hundreds of feet. This is something that we've done hundreds and hundreds of times before at an event. You can run all the way to a tech table. Obviously, we're just using a short XLR cable for the purposes of this video. Usually you would run it stereo, but for the purposes of this video, we're just gonna run the left leg. Okay, so we connected that to the first input on our audio mixer. Then we're gonna connect the output of our audio mixer to our powered speaker. And that switch that we used before is now back down to that line level position because we're using line level outputs on an audio mixer. So we're gonna turn up the level on our first channel here, turn up the output. And if you need more volume, you can use the gain at the top of the channel strip on this audio mixer. So I would say at exactly where we were before, we're getting the same output of the speaker using this method running through an audio mixer. So there's two good options, whether or not you wanna run directly from your DI box to a powered speaker, or if you're working with a bigger production team and you need to run to the back of the room to their audio mixer. Okay, next I gotta walk you through my four favorite DI boxes to use for DJs, and I'm gonna explain the pros and cons of each one of these DI boxes. Now, as full disclosure, I'm sure you can see here that they all look kind of similar. These are four different DI boxes from a company called Radial. We love these DI boxes. This isn't a sponsored video or anything like that. I've been using Radial DI boxes for over 20 years, and I've never really deviated from them because everybody else agrees that they're industry standard and they're robust, and over 20 years, they've never let me down. I owned a production company that ran 1,200 events a year, 300 of those events probably had a DI box on them. So we're talking tens of thousands of events that I ran and thousands of events that had DI boxes at them. And not once have we ever had an issue with the radial DI box. You can see that they're built to have a truck drive over them. They're extremely rugged, extremely well built. And I can't really say that about a lot of other audio boxes. I've used DI boxes from Behringer at schools and churches and stuff like that before, and they just get beat up. They stop working after a period of time. I've never had that experience from Radial. Okay, let's walk through these DI boxes. First, my favorite DI box to use for any DJ. Like I said, we ran a production company, two or 300 events a year, 
we had DI boxes. If we ever heard that there is a DI box at the event, this is the DI box that we spec'd. We have a DJ kit that we would pack, and it would have the Pro AV2 DI box with it, an RCA cable, and a stereo quarter inch cable. On the side of this DI box, it has a bunch of inputs. You can use stereo quarter inch inputs, you can use stereo RCA inputs, or you can use an eighth inch TRS. So if you just have an aux cable coming from a phone, you can use this for that as well. Basically, this DI box will eat anything that you throw at it, and this is why we always spec this for live events. When you don't know the DJ that's coming in the room or anything like that, you don't know what equipment they're using, you throw this DI box at it with an RCA cable and a stereo TRS cable, and it will handle no matter what the DJ has, convert it to XLR so we could run it to the back of the room for our tech table so we could use it. So the Pro AV2 is by far the DJ's best friend. I would say if you're only going to buy one DI box, you buy this. And there is a lot of people online that say that you need an active DI box. This is passive. As I explained earlier in this video, I don't agree with that. Active DI boxes are twice the price, and all you have to do to combat the passive DI box is switch the back of your speaker to mic level if you're connecting directly from your DJ controller to a speaker. If you're connecting directly from your DJ controller to an audio mixer, it's a non-issue because it's expecting a mic level input anyway. So I think this is the best DI box for DJs, period, full stop. If you're only going to buy one, get the Radial Pro AV2. Next, we have the most popular DI box from Radial. This is the Pro D2. This is a standard, typical stereo DI box. And what comes with the standard DI box is you get quarter inch inputs on the left and right side, but then you get loop back. So you can take a copy of whatever you just plugged into this DI box and send it back to the musician. This is more common for somebody like a bass player. You plug their bass guitar into this and then you send them a copy of the same signal to their bass amp so they still get their bass amp connectivity and then you get a copy of XLR out of the back. So this is more versatile for, I would say, other musicians other than DJs. I think the Pro AV2 is better because you don't need an output of a DI box for the performer for the DJ itself like you don't need this loop through mode but it's more helpful to have more inputs on it so uh, this is standard though if you are like an, another musician if you play other instruments the Pro D2 you can't go wrong with it it still works really well for DJs just doesn't have RCA inputs so you need a RCA to quarter inch cable to get into this DI box next we have an active DI box the J48 now a lot of people online say that DJs need active DI boxes. I disagree with it. In my opinion, you get priced out because it gets too expensive when you get an active DI box. It's almost double the price of a passive DI box. And for a DJ that's working with line level signals, it's not a big benefit. I recommend active DI boxes for things like an acoustic guitar, where you have a small musician like preamp inside of that acoustic guitar and you want to bump it up a little bit, add a little bit of tone and send it to the back of the room. That's not the case. We're working with good line level signals here. I don't think you need a box like this. Next, we have the radial trim two. This box is cooler than the Pro AV2. I just think it's overkill and more complicated than it needs to be. It has quarter inch inputs. It has RCA inputs. It has a TRS 8th inch or 3.5 millimeter inputs so and aux cable. But what's unique to this device is you get a trim knob. So if you do need to fine tune that volume, it's not active, so it's not making your volume louder. But if you do need to turn it down for any reason, you can do that with this. But this is quite expensive. One other thing that I think you should be considering if you're in the market for a DI box is the price of some of these nice DI boxes that will last you your lifetime that you really want to get good value out of, you're almost better getting an audio mixer if you're a DJ. This has more inputs, has balanced outputs, you get more control, it's self-powered, you plug it into the wall for power so you don't need to worry about phantom power or anything like that. You get EQ, you get processing, you get effects. I would strongly consider that if I was starting off new, being a DJ, I'd get my DJ controller set up, I'd buy a small audio mixer first, and then I'd buy DI Box. DI Box is still a really helpful and powerful tool, it has its place,
But I'd say if you don't yet have an audio mixer like the Mackie Pro FX 6V3 here, I'll have a link down in the description. I would do something like this first before I got a DI box. It's far more powerful. You get microphone inputs and all that stuff. Now we covered a lot in this video. If you do have any questions, please leave a comment down in the comment section below. Again, if you are looking for pricing or specs, we have links down in the description below. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.